spider sense tingling. How's it hanging everybody? Fudge Budger here and I got something pretty cool we're going to take a look at today. Hopefully shed some light on. You might be looking at this cover here and you might be doing a little bit of a double take once you start to notice Dr. Octopus merged with Carnage right here. And I wouldn't blame you for getting some flashbacks of the Spider-Man game for the PlayStation. Be Spider-Man. Swing from buildings. Shoot webs. Bring down the bad guys. And for the first time ever, you have all his cool spider powers. Jim, the garbage isn't going to take itself out. You don't just play it, you live it. Jim? Spider-Man the Game. Rated E for everyone. From the greatest of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. A classic, still holds up, lots of charm, fun game. But, in that game's final level, Doc Ock bonds to the Carnage symbiote to create this original character called Monster Ock, which was so powerful you had to run away from it instead of fighting it because it was so scary. Spider-Man for the PlayStation released in August of 2000 and this magazine right here from September of 1999. Say hey, what? What even is this thing? Well, the series in question is the Spectacular Spider-Man Adventures magazine published by Panini in the United Kingdom. It started in 1995 reprinting American Spider-Man comics. Primarily the comics based on the 90s cartoon, but also lots of other random issues here and there. Fans from the UK might have more passing familiarity with this series than most others, but I think many are in the dark about these weird stories existing. So, starting in 1999, Panini started publishing original content for the magazine. And this is the first issue with an original story, issue 52. And they went all out to kick it off. The original stories lasted until 2011, when Disney put an end to that sort of thing for the most part. So, with all that said, let's dive in and see how truly bonkers this thing is. I mean, first off, great splash page here. Monster Act from the PlayStation game. Step aside. Here, he's called Dr. Carnage. Something I find so interesting about this magazine is not only the fact that it predates the video game by a year, but how this villain combo in question never happened in the U.S. comics to date. I mean, 19 years later, we did end up getting a Green Goblin Carnage hybrid called Red Goblin, but Red Goblin, you step aside too, because we're talking about Dr. Carnage here today. Now this magazine's so under the radar, I really doubt the developers at Neversoft making the Spider-Man game at the time knew about this. So I feel the likely story is that it was just a case of two different groups of creators thinking about the same kinds of cool stuff around the same time. And, side note, these magazines would come with little toys packaged with them in every issue. And I don't have the one for this issue, but packaged with it was a slimy spider, and I do have a picture of it, and here's what it looked like. Now, how did Dr. Carnage come to be? Let's find out and flash back to see Carnage being drawn out to a spooky locale where Doc Ock traps him and steals the symbiote. Interestingly, Doc Ock is sporting his uh, look from the then current John Byrne era of comics with the metal braces on his hands and legs. Now most people aren't really fans of that look, but I kind of dig it. I mean, it made all eight of his limbs look all metal for consistency. But uh, that's not really here nor there. So, we cut the Spidey stopping a purse snatcher. Pretty standard Spidey stuff. And this lovely moment doesn't last long because Dr. Carnage is already out to get Spidey and is making quite a mess out of the streets. I quite like the art here by John Ross. 
The action is well drawn and Spidey looks super sharp. Coloring by Maria Keene is bold and complements it well. And honestly, the slightly angular way that Spidey's drawn really reminds me of John Romita Jr.'s Spider-Man from around this era too. Uh, just a great look all, all around, I, I think. Now, Spider-Man fights this monstrosity. He goes in, does a little bit of cool butt kicking, but we wind up back where the story began with the splash page. Spidey's unconscious and uh, is taken away by Dr. Carnage, and we're left on this little cliffhanger picked back up on later in the magazine. But for now, we got a swell coloring page featuring Spider-Man fighting the aliens from way back in Amazing Spider-Man number two. And they probably have the aliens here because this issue of the magazine prior, they were reprinting some Spider-Man chapter one, which had the bits reinterpreting this story. Next, we got this crazy looking fine style spread here where you're supposed to spot the Sinister Six. Can you find them all? I mean, they're not really super hidden that that much. And you got Dormammu there. I don't think he's part of this supposed Sinister Six, but it's cool to see him there. Uh, there's also apparently Dr. Doom in here hiding around. Can you see where he is? I know where he is. I won't spoil. Whoa, now look at all these cool Toy Biz figures. Gotta love it. You could win all these. All you needed to do was answer a very hard question. Peter Parker gained his powers after he was bitten by which of the following? A. A radioactive flea. B. A radioactive superhero. Or C. A radioactive spider. If you're having trouble answering that one, then I don't know what to tell you. Because, I mean, everybody knows his origin where he got bit by a radioactive superhero. Here we've got half of a pullout poster, which is the cover art for the issue. And you got a little game here where you're supposed to figure out who the villains are in the photos. Peter's photos got damaged. You gotta help him out. Oh man, Spider-Man needs your help some more. There's a bunch of enemies out to get him, and you gotta uncover this code and see who the villains are that are about to attack him. And then, over here, you got a little uh, spot the difference thing. It's pretty much standard children's magazine type of activities, like a crossword. And then you got the rest of this pull-out poster. And then we got an advertisement for another magazine, and we're back to the story. Oh man, we find that Spidey strapped to a rocket in Dr. Carnage's base. We just cast he's heading back there to regain his symbiote. I guess he left to put on some clothes before returning later. The base they're in is Cape Citadel, which is a military base in the Marvel Universe. It's the place where Magneto first fought the X-Men back in X-Men number one. It's also in Florida. So, Dr. Carnage traveled all the way from Florida in a day to New York just to attack Spider-Man and take him back to his base in Florida so he can strap Spider-Man to a missile and launch the missile back to New York. Um, it's very simple. So he has these symbiote spores that he's hoping to use to turn everybody in New York into carnages. Now, Ock had a plan in the PlayStation game involving unleashing symbiotes, but there is a little bit more to it than here. No one can control the symbiotes. No one! I need not control the symbiotes, my man. Doc Ock? We will work as one. It is a new world. Humanity needs the skills that my technology will give them. Symbiosis is the only way. I should have known a reform, Doc Ock, was too good to be true. A perfect world order. Those who cannot share my vision will be crushed by it. Now that's a cool, creepy shot right there. Ock senses Cletus Cassidy's trying to get his symbiote back, so he whacks him away. And Spider-Man uses the distraction to break free and put a wrench in the plans. 
See, it wasn't really smart of Doc Ock here to put Spider-Man literally in the perfect position to stop his plan. If he hadn't gone out and made a big scene, nobody really would have been one the wiser, and it would have been much more difficult for Spider-Man to stop the plan. Master planner here, everybody. They struggle on this missile as it gets launched, and there's lots of cool action here, but the missile's trajectory is thrown off from all their weight on here, and it's sent hurtling straight back towards the base. Spider-Man gets those spores just in time with a real cool little bit of spider speed. Dr. Carnage is rearing to go, ready to drive that missile back into the base and hit Spider-Man, whatever it takes. But Spidey dodges it all like a pro. Uh-oh, though. Dr. Carnage is still coming. Is anything going to stop this guy? Oh, don't worry. Have no fear, because the fight's over. Spidey's won as he says right here. The symbiote doesn't have the strength to go back to Cassie as him and Ock both lie there. So Spider-Man jokes about how he wishes he was dealing with Venom instead. I'd say the real thing you should be thinking about there, Spider-Man, is what are you going to do now that you're in Florida with an unconscious Doc Ock and Carnage in the middle of nowhere? How are you going to swing out of there? You, you, you need some help, Spider-Man. You gotta get out of there. What a strange story. All this crammed into 11 pages. I think this is a, a really silly thing. It doesn't make much sense. But as a big in-your-face spectacle of ridiculous things being mashed together, this absolutely succeeds at what it's doing. I love dumb fun stuff like this. To wind things down, we got a little spread here that shows you can cut up your magazines and paste the art all over a cut up cereal box to create a magazine holder for your collection. And I'm really glad the cap copy I have is not cut up as that would have been tragic. You've got a drawing page next here where you can draw carnage. Fun fan art page with lots of art from young fans. Everybody who got their art in this magazine won a Web Splashers toy. And uh, side note, I really enjoy the one here with Craven and Chameleon. And then we got a peek at the cover for the next issue featuring Spider-Man going up against Dracula. Nice and spooky looking fun right there. Then here for the back cover, you could cut this out and collect back covers for the next handful of issues to form a little booklet that would become a little dossier of all of Spider-Man's greatest enemies. So that was the first original story from the UK Spectacular Spider-Man Adventures Kids Magazine, issue 52. I hope you enjoyed this look at a weird time capsule of a book featuring some deep cut Spidey stuff. If you've never seen this thing before, then I'm glad I could show you something new. This was a very different type of video for me to make for this channel. So let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. I have another strange issue of this magazine series that I think would make for an interesting analysis too. So maybe we'll see. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.